tonight's show, the Crows go for glory in the AFLW. The other sport that drove Brad Crouch's recovery. And the Crows career that's gone full circle. Hi everyone and welcome to The Crows Show brought to you by Optus, I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith and Mark with the Sydney game out of the way. Well the focus now turns to Sunday's AFLW Grand Final against Carlton. After a disappointing 2018, the players are now back to their brilliant best and going for their second premiership in three years. Yes, they've certainly formed a close bond with first time coach Doc Clark. Matthew Clark, or Doc as we know him as, is uh, just an unbelievable guy. He's um, both on and off the field, just so approachable, and his communication skills are just elite. So, um, yeah, he's uh, brought so much to this playing group um, in terms of our skill fundamentals, but also just empowering not only the leaders, the current leaders, but um, you know, every single player on our squad is a leader and um, they have a voice and we've really empowered them. She's got it now, splits the centre magnificently and Adelaide out by 61 points. A lot of credit to the leadership group, both from this year but also from previous years. They, they invested a lot of time in sort of inducting that new group in. It's a fairly diverse group of new players, so 10 new players into a squad of 30, but a couple of those uh, came from other, other clubs and had a fair bit of experience. Pretty exciting, I guess, to, to know that we'd made the grand final and, um, yeah, that we get the opportunity not to just be in the grand final, but to have it here in Adelaide and to play it at Adelaide Oval is, uh, I think, pretty pretty special. Ponta working well. Ponta gets it. There she goes on the outside of the play of the Crows ahead of your grand final. Grand final. Don't come around every day, so um, I think it'll be a great game. Should be a great occasion at the Adelaide Oval. Uh, obviously, we had a good crowd there last week. We hope to get an even bigger crowd this week. And, uh, and if we do that, then the atmosphere will be amazing. But ultimately, it'll be just a great game of footy. I think Carlton's form is pretty good. Very good, actually. So, uh, yeah, we look forward to a great contest. Yes, Doc and his assistants have worked hard at giving the players a deeper understanding of the game. And, Mark, what's the biggest change you've seen in the group this season? I think you mentioned that just then in terms of the way that Matthew Clark's been able to teach them some really new tactics. I love their defensive structure. The way they've set up behind the ball has really restricted the teams and, and the skill level in which they've worked a lot on, I know, and their ability to maintain possession from defence all the way through, it's just been outstanding. Yeah, they you? sure do look well coached. And what about some of the new players? Who's really impressed you? this season. Yeah, well, Danielle Ponto, I just love the way she's gone about it. We saw last week in the preliminary final, three goals from her. She's such an instinctive player and the footy's in her blood, so I've really enjoyed watching her this year. And Chloe Shear is the other one. I just just really love the, her kick. She's probably the best kick for me in the AFLW, and I think that's only going to get better. She's a young lady, and I just feel like she is going to go to the next level as the years go by. Indeed, lots to look forward to. So we take on Carlton on Sunday. Why can we win? Well, look, we're in great form that's first and foremost but secondly we've just got such consistency all over the ground you know the fact we had nine players in the all australian squad mm -hmm. just is says volumes for where we are at the moment and the fact we've already beaten carlton we beat them at their home ground at adelaide oval in front of a huge crowd i just can't see carlton being able to trouble adelaide well go girls we are right there behind you and every crows supporter will be out there with you on sunday now mark sitting out a whole year of footy is obviously what every player dreads yes and of course brad Crow knows what it's like. Not only did he miss all of last season, but his whole career has been dogged by persistent injuries. Just 61 games in six years, but fingers crossed he's back better than ever. Thanks to Revolution Roofing, we discover that a different sport entirely has been crucial to his recovery. Well, I took up golf as I guess a hobby, hobby for me to play and I'm slowly improving at it, but um, I'm really enjoying it as well. Probably took it up in October or something like that. It's since then I've been sort of playing with a group, uh, bunch of the boys here, two, probably two or three times a week now. This all of last year. It's good to have you back, Brad. There was times throughout my rehab where I was really worried for my body and, and for my long, long term body. I thought, you know, 10, 15 years' time I'll be able to run. And, run or you know be able to go for a hit of golf with my mates or 
you know, stuff stuff like that where I, I literally thought if, I, if something doesn't change soon that I won't be able to do do things I'd, I'd um, always wanted to do. And it also made it much sweeter when I did get rid of the pain and, and the, the bit I was in as well and um, made me realise I can, I can do it again. Well, they need a special lift. So I've done a, a stack of work you know, with heaps of heaps of exercises to work on all the, all the core muscles. Power lifts, so like we're doing a lot of squats, deadlifts. So every day doing stuff to make sure that your hips and groins are strong. The Crows are certainly a better balanced side with Brad Crouch in the midfield. No doubt about that. Do stay with us. Still to come, who's next to take up Don Pike's golf challenge? And the former Crow with a few tricks up his sleeve. Welcome back. Well, last week we saw two Crows coaches go head to head on the golf course. Inaugural coach Graham Corns was the first to challenge Don Pike in our par three competition at Glenelg. This week it's the turn of Channel 7's John Riddell, all thanks to Optus. Welcome to Glenelg Golf Club, here this afternoon joined by John Riddell from 7 Nightly News. Um, welcome along John. Yeah, cheers mate, good to see you. It's going to be a... Um Tough day for me. One hole. We've got uh, a little par three down there. Yeah. Nearly 100 metres, so not too challenging. But um, before we start, I need to know one thing. Yeah. Your football allegiances, please. Uh, in South Australia? Yes. I'm a port man. Okay. You're you going to walk up? We walk no, up. we're all good. Very good. I'll let you lead oh, away. Guess first. Yeah, terrific. Terrific. Come back. Oh, Come back. Turning. Ooh. 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 Good luck. Thanks for that little little, yeah, little yeah, hint in the backswing. I thought it, it actually helped you. It actually helped you. Kept it going. Um, well, I'm going to take my putt. I'm not sure what you're <laughs> taking. <laughs> so, John, obviously being in TV for, for 30 years um, and on air live for 15 years, what's any major bloopers to um, to report? Oh, yeah, many. <laughs> to, almost too many to mention. But um, I got into strife. There was a the last story in the bulletin, there was a, a guy who was covered in tattoos from every part of his body, including, yep. um, you know, right up to here and onto his face. And um, I made some comment about it and uh, he, he decided he might like to meet me after the show outside the studio. Right, so, yeah. We didn't have that meeting, but uh, I, I, I made uh, I, what I thought was a funny comment. Um, he said, uh, I can't do any more because I've run out of room on his body. And I said, Ran out of brains, more likely. Right. And uh, apparently didn't go down with didn't the big sit well with him. Where do you reckon I went? I think you're over the back here. I am. Over here by the ducks. Oh no. Oh, <laughs> came out a bit hot. Stopping. All right, let's say that's how it started from the beginning. <laughs> we're both there for one. <laughs> that's our tee shots. He's in. in. She goes. Well done. Oh, she just blew on past. I anyway. was there for you. Yeah, I was here right behind me, weren't you? <laughs> thanks, John. Appreciate Brilliant. you coming out. Spending some time with us. Mate. Yeah. All the best. All the best for the season and Thank the boys. You. Well, you could be excused if the name Ashley Fernie doesn't readily spring to mind as a former Crows player. He pulled on the Guernsey just twice back in 1996. He's better known now by his stage name, Ash Vegas, a conjurer, trickster, magician, whatever you like. And he's just finished a series of fringe shows at the Alma. Since I was a kid, I've always enjoyed doing magic tricks and just probably as I've got a bit older, probably more recently a trip to Las Vegas about two years ago really excited my imagination. I started learning a bit more magic and then thought I'd give it a go and see where it takes me. As a young kid growing up, the dream was to, to play AFL football and I got drafted in end of 95, so I was there 96, 7 and 8. So I cracked a couple of games in my first year, then I found it a bit tough in the, the premiership years of 97, 98. So from then on, your sort of life gets away. You, have a, you get married and have kids and 
you know, sort of now or never to give a, leave the magic a go. Having kids, I used to show them a few tricks when they were younger, and so you know, as the kids got older, the, the tricks had to get a bit better. So I watched a lot of stuff on YouTube, learned some tricks, watched some performers locally and internationally. Like I said, you, once you've learned a few basics, the, the list of the tricks come on quite easy. So I thought I'll give it a go and, and try a few few gigs and entertainment like that. So I do a bit of the classics of magic. So I do the some rope tricks, some some the linking ring tricks, the cups and balls tricks. I do a bit of mind reading as well, and it's very much an interactive um, interactive show. So a lot of volunteers come up on stage. I teach them a few tricks, they get involved, they really sort of feel part of the show. So it's very much an interactive show, a lot of humour about it. It's really better fun and entertaining night. I hope it all goes well. I suppose the ultimate goal is to maybe get a gig on a cruise ship one day. I think it'll be a nice lifestyle just cruising the world, performing magic and lazing by the pool. So that's a bit of a bit of the, on the bucket list to get that sort of done. But it's all it's all a bit of, bit of fun and just see where it takes me, I think. It'd be handy if he could make some of the opposition players disappear occasionally. OK, when Mark returns after the break, we'll see if Hugh Greenwood can turn the tables on Smithers. Brody Smith should have learnt a lot about his teammates during the past few seasons, but how much does he remember? Each week, thanks to Thomas Foods, a player will test the memory of our resident funny man, and today it's the turn of Hugh Greenwood, who, as we know, has a fascinating sporting story. This week we got Huey Greenwood. Let's see how much I know about Huey. Brody, how many brothers and sisters do I have? Two brothers? <laughs> no, I've just got one, one sister. sister. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was just a half No, good, good, good. Surely knows one. What are my dog's names? Jax and Rioli. Perfect. What college basketball team did I play for? Uh, the Lobos. Good. Me New Mexico. Good. Yes. You didn't say Mexico. That's a start. <laughs> well done. What did I study or slash get my degree in during my time at UNM? Fortnite. <laughs> that was my that was my minor. What was oh, my major? God, no idea. I've got no Do you know idea. It? Psychology. No. Okay. I've got my major in. Mm. Minor in, in Fortnite, major in, in psych. <laughs> close, close. How many years had I spent away from football before coming to the Crows? How long was I in retirement for? I reckon thirteen you stopped. And you got back into it when you so came test your math about out. 20, eleven. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> Close, good. Yeah. Eleven would have been impressive. Yeah. Eight. And then I'd just like to hear you say it. How many goals did I kick on debut? Oh, three. Good. Yeah, okay. can't forget that. Thank you. <laughs> three epic celebrations. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> all in the first half. Blow up. <laughs> Towards you. Thanks, mate. No worries. Thanks for joining well us. Well done. You're actually impressive. Well done. I must say, that's fairly impressive from Smithers. By the way, that's not the last we'll hear from him tonight. Now, already this year, we've seen players struck down by season-ending injuries, but their response to the setbacks tells us much about their willingness to engage with fans. Here's the advertiser's Reese Humphrey. We're all guilty of taking football too seriously on occasion, and sometimes it takes a footballer's darkest moment to remind us that it is just a game. Two of the AFL's premier defenders, Alex Rance and Tom Duday, suffered the injury that every footballer dreads the most in round one, a ruptured ACL, and now facing 12 months on the sidelines. But both presented a picture of positivity immediately after their injury. Within 30 minutes, they were both on the bench encouraging their teammates, and within an hour after the game, both spoke to the media and were quick to put their injury into perspective, reminding everyone that football is only a small part of their lives and they would be back bigger and better than ever. Like Rand said the other night, we're, I'm similar here. I've got a great club, a great culture and a uh, great supportive family and beautiful partner who helped me out. So in terms of uh, the recovery and stuff, if, if the worst is to be, then it's, yeah, it's just an injury. There's no doubt that Tom Duday will return as the footballer that everyone hopes and expects that he will be. Last season he won three awards at Adelaide's Best and Fairest Night, including the award for most professional. He's respected and he's a star, and in my eyes he's a potential future captain of the football club. Thanks Reese. Now, when Marty Matner was recruited by the Crows in 2002, it was big news in the tiny southeast town of Kaikai. Kai. And the youngster didn't let his local fans down. Going on to play 98 games for Adelaide, winning a premiership with Sydney, before coaching Sturt to two flags. Now, thanks to Flight Centre, we find he's back where his AFL career started. Gives it out wide to Matner, who's 
space in front of them. Yeah, a lot of things have changed and then there's some things that haven't changed. There's, you know, there's still some of the old facility that I sort of, when I was a player, you sort of grew up knowing and there's some people there that still were there when I was playing. Um, but then there's a lot has changed, you know, the shed floor and the gym and, and then there's a lot of new players and a lot of new staff. So yeah, there's some things that have changed and some things that haven't. For the first goal of the grand final, loads up a long, accurate left foot. So from a little town called Kai Kai, on the freeway or on the highway to Melbourne, about 150k southeast of Adelaide, played footy for Peak and Districts, local footy club, played a couple of junior games at Sturt and then um, moved into their senior ranks and, and from there got drafted to the Crows. And this is a big play out wide, can Virtual turn Matner inside out? He doesn't. The move to Sydney was a tough decision to make, um, but one of those things that I sort of had to do, I think, for myself and um, for my footy. Sydney had a great program and, and the culture there was really good, I think, also, too, that their, you know, Paul Roos, their success was, again, built on being successful over a long period of time and wanted to play finals every year. The double Roos, premiership number 14. Um, I think the first year, I honestly believe that you know everything just fell into place, and you know with a little bit of luck we were able to win it. The second one, I think, I think it sort of showed that what the club had put in place with myself and other people around the footy club, that the success was and the structure was the right thing in place. The role this year is, I guess, um, two components to it. There's working with the defenders as an assistant coach, and then overseeing, I guess, the team defence of the whole the whole team and the whole club. So. Um, both sort of go hand with hand in terms of the defensive side of the game and um, something that I really enjoy coaching and learning. Number eight, Marty Madna. Marty's going to be a great asset to the coaching team. After the break, we sharpen the focus on grassroots footy. Some milestone games are coming up for Crows players in the next few weeks. Fan favourite Brody Smith will chalk up his 150th, a significant achievement in a career that started just down the road at Henley. In this grassroots footy segment brought to you by Toyota, Brody recalls his junior days with the Sharks. I started at Portland Footy Club in under nines and it was always club footy and school soccer. So then I got to under 11s and I left club footy to go play club soccer. Um, then when I came back, I followed my mates to Smosh West Lakes um, and then went to Henley High. So I followed my mates again to the Henley Sharks and um, spent a couple of years there and was lucky enough to win a flag with them. So yeah, a few clubs in my junior career. So Scotty Lysert and Sam Gray um, from the power and um, Jared Pollock was a year below me, Cam Ellis Yolman was a year below me, a lot of guys, guys like Matty Rose who's now um, one of the captains at South Adelaide. So we had a, a really strong sort of age group which was good because we got to, to push each other and play against each other in reserves and league footy as well so my mates get stuck into me a bit, they, they reckon I, a bit of Kevin Durant went and chased a, chased a premiership but um, it was purely because I went to Henley High and um, so I made the move to Henley as well and um, yeah we're undefeated premiers. Toyota also provides a merchandise pack each week for our crow in the crowd and this year our camera is patrolling the southern plaza at Adelaide Oval and that's where we spotted you. If you recognise yourself contact the club before 5pm on Wednesday be ready with some photo ID and that prize will be all yours. Let's stay with the fans and hear their views on the sensitive issue of grand final timing. There's no doubt opinions are divided. Leave it as is. Yep. I don't, no, a day game's always been traditional and that's the way it should be. Uh, no, I think it should move to twilight. Yep. Move later on in the evening. Stick to what it's at, I think. Yeah. Just keep it how it is, yeah. Would you stand on a night, Grand Final? Oh, yeah, that'd actually be sick as they, yeah, I reckon. Um, I reckon um, going with the times, I think move it to uh, a new, um, you know, late afternoon start. The twilight? Yes, sir. That just about wraps up our show for this week, brought to you by Optus. Now, don't forget to check out at The Crow Show on Twitter for all the latest news, as well as the club's social media accounts on Facebook and Instagram. Next week, we'll see how Lockie Murphy repays the club for his big break. 
Thanks for your company and we look forward to joining you again next Sunday at our normal time, 11.30 on 7. And don't forget the AFLW Grand Final Sunday at 12.30. Go, Go Crows! Crows.